word problems about equal groups. Uh -oh. About equal groups. So write that down. Make sure you got that nice and defined because um, we are going to write this down. Equal group pattern problems follow this pattern. Uh, it follows uh, the number of groups. You can abbreviate just like number of groups. Times the number in each group equals a total. Make sure you write that in bold, blazing, beautiful letters. Here is your example then. The chairs were arranged in the chairs were arranged in fifteen groups with a little parenthesis rows that had 20 chairs in each group. How many chairs? And again, I am not so much concerned about the answer as it is that you can kind of put it into the pattern. Yes, this is an easy sort of problem, but they get harder and you kind of need to start thinking in terms of uh, these patterns and figuring out how to put it in those patterns there. So, here's the deal. Let's rearrange this here. The number of groups times the number in each group equals the total. If I ask to fill in the blanks there, this one's a pretty simple one, because it tells me I had 15 groups that's the number of groups. Now I'm multiplying that by, I have 20 in each group. That goes here. And I know multiplication is pretty simple for 300 total chairs. Are you right? Okay, here is where the trouble comes in, young sixth graders. In our beautiful language that we have, okay, we have a lot of words that stand for the word groups, but aren't groups. For example, let's see if you can follow along this. A class, as in the sixth grade class, is a group of students, right? A class is a group of students. How about this? A cup of water a mathematical cup of water would be a group of oh yeah eight ounces it's a group of ounces put together what can count from that a team would be a group of players uh, what else is there let's see if I can come up with there um, Oh, the, another thing here, when you go, uh, if you were to go in the store and buy a loaf of bread, and I don't want, I don't mean slices, a loaf of bread would be a group of slices, but it would also be a group of, now you're, buy, you're buying it, so if you, you take and give the cashier a group of money. money. So a loaf of bread is a maybe a group of a dollar, 125 cents, or whatever it is. So you have to think outside that little box there, because here is going to be a problem. Let's see if we can put it down here. Um, okay. Uh, there were 232. There 
were 232, I write that down the way I said it, seventh grade students in eight classrooms. Seventh grade students in eight classrooms. How many students were in each classroom? How many in each classroom? And again, I would very much love, since you know this is a group word problem, I would very much like to see you write it down as in the, the little pattern thing. The number of what? In, it, in each group? Number of groups times the number in each group equals the total. Which two of those three do we know? And well, I guess the first thing we should look at is which word in there is a group of something? Now, since you're English scholars with Ms. Shum, let's look at all the nouns in there. Uh, we've got seventh grade students. We've got classrooms. We've got another classroom. Is there any other nouns in there? Eight. Eight, 232, but those can't be. Either. What is there? Are we going to hold the it's a no. Pronoun. What's a pronoun? Pronouns are your specific. I, me, he, we, she. The teacher. There is. There is. There is. Anyway, back to this thing. Which yes. word stands for groups? Is a student a group of something? Is a classroom a group of something? Maggie Dervis? Is a group of what? Well, a student is a child. Seventh grade is a group of students. Huh? Let's just kick out seventh grade and just call it a student then. A classroom, children, is a group of students. If you look in this classroom, it is a group of students. So the number of classrooms, which is eight, times how many in each? How many are in each? We don't know. Because we know there are a total of this. This is a case where you don't know one of the things you're multiplying together. How then would I find out the answer to that, Alex? Uh, you divide 232 divided by 8. How did I know that? <laughs> how do I know that for sure? You are correct in this case, but that doesn't mean you'll be correct in every case. How can you ensure that you're correct in every case? You can check your answer. Have I taught them nothing in the two years of math? Ryan? Yeah, besides by asking the teacher about it. Somebody. Taylor! Well, sure, but what would your unknown number notes tell you? That's what we want. Maggie? Well, um, you would have to be 29 times 8. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can give a very long, drawn-out thing for what I want you to go. What have I always said if you got this problem? Any time you're missing a number, in a missing number problem, you should just simply book out. Make up the music for finding a problem. Think of an easy problem, like 6 times 2 is 12. You're missing the middle number, so you just say, oh, I'm missing the middle. What did I do with 12 and 6 to get 2? It's a foolproof way of always knowing you're at least doing the right operation. And you probably will usually get it right, but there will be times when you won't get it right. Like this time. Well, no, I won't. Oh, eventually we'll get it right. 